Hey everybody, and welcome to today's video where we're gonna cover a bit of a complex theme. Namely, we're gonna try to explain how we can model carving on surfaces that are not flat. Namely, we're gonna see how we can model carving and complex shapes on surfaces, on surfaces that are either round or indented or have a more complex shape. Now, before I start uh, explaining anything uh, else, I want to make one thing clear. We're going to be using a script to help us with this. Now, I have I have to say right off the bat, I don't know who made this script because I've had it for a very long time and I don't even know where I got it. So I tried to get it off from uh, script spot. It wasn't available, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description of the video as well as on the site. So feel free and get it. The script in uh, the, that we're talking about is called SlideNet, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you right away how you can install it because I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the question of the day. So first of all, uh, once you you download it, you're gonna get this file so it's a mzp or mcr script file so this is what you're going to download as soon as you get this just copy it over in your uh c drive program files autodesk uh well this is by the default where it goes so inside 3ds max 2014 i'm using 2014 at the moment you have a folder called macro scripts so just go over here and uh, paste the script in here. That way you're gonna have the script available. So as soon as that is done, you simply go over in the max script and you go run script. From here, you simply find it again and run it. That way you're gonna have the script uh, being active. And as soon as you have it active, all you can do is go over to customize, customize user interface. And in here, you can uh, jump over to toolbars. And from here, just slide down until you get to SI. Let's find it. We're looking for slide net. As you can see it over here yeah so you can uh, access it quicker i would probably advise you to make a new um, field for it so you can just make a new layer click here name it whatever and drag and drop it in here now you can dock it at the top but as you can see i already have it docked so i'm gonna close it and this is well this is okay and we have our script installed so we can start with the modeling portion of this tutorial so just so you're in the clear on what we want to make this is what we are basically trying to achieve you see these fine details they are on a round surface so if you're trying to model this by hand on this surface you might run into a bit of an uh, issue or a bit of trouble because it's going to be a bit well, not, not, I don't want to say hard, it's going to be bothersome. So this is another type of detail. We can see some more over here on the edges. And here's another one. Here's an even more complex one with swirling vines. And you get the idea. So let me show you what I have for our scene at the moment. I basically made this totem-like structure. It, it has three distinct fields. It has this uh, shape over here, which is uh, okay to show, showcase how we can uh, model on this surface. It has an indention down here, which is a bit of a, with a bit of a twist. It has a raised uh, platform. So let's see how we can add the details to this totem. All right, so first of all, before we do anything else, I'm going to go over and put an edit poly on top of the Turbo Smooth. 
So if you don't have these buttons over here, just click here and click show buttons or configure modifier set. And that is going to allow you to add those buttons. I'm saying this because I actually had somebody ask that question previously. So once we have those, we want to jump in and add an edit poly modifier. And now that I have that done, I'm going to click here in the middle and select one of my edges. I'm going to click on loop. So it selects all of them. Hold down control and click on polygon. That is going to select the adjacent polygons. Grow the selection a few times. And this is more or less the surface that I want to preserve so I can use for the deformation that I want to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit detach. I'm going to detach it as a clone. Uh, call it surface of one. Click OK. Deselect this. Reselect it. And now I can move it on the Y axis for a, a given value of, let's try with 60. All right, awesome. It moved it at the side. All right, so now the way this slide knit um, plugin works or script works, it's it first needs to have an unwrapped model. So before we do anything else, I'm going to click on Unwrap UVW. Now, the thing here is that if I want to try to select this, I go loop and do it this way, and then simply try to pelt map this with the start pelt and start relax, I'm going to get some issues. Even if I go with the relax and start relaxing it by angle or even by polygons, I can see that I'm going to have a bit of a problem because it's going to try to collapse on itself. So what I can do in um, cases like this is instead of uh, using the unwrap like that or the pelt mapping, what I can do here is select one of these edges, or let me just delete that, add another one, another unwrap, and now select one of these edges and click on this unfold strip from loop button. So what this thing is going to do right away, as you can see, it added this as a seam. So it's a green line. But once you open the UV editor, you're going to notice something. This whole thing has been unwrapped as a whole uh, strip. So I'm going to click on pack custom. It's going to bring it down. So it's like this. I'm going to rotate it around 90 degrees back it again and here's the thing once you do this uh, this way with the unfold strip from loop you're gonna end up with this type of a problem the edges might actually be a uh, be skewed a bit so it's an easy fix all you got to do is select the edges in that we're talking about and align them horizontally that is going to fix up that issue select the bottom horizontally, select the edges on the right and the left, and they have been fixed. Let me just check it. There we go. Awesome. It's packed inside. Now, another thing that's really important to uh, um, mention here is once you use the this option for the unfold strip from loop, the UV looks fine. But if you go down to the VW, sometimes, as you can see over here, it's not flat. It has a bit of a problem. And that can make some issues with how sli uh, SlideNet works. So what we have to do is click on the scale button, just go on vertically, click, and drag it downwards until it's flat. As soon as it's flat, you're OK. Go back to UV. And you basically have this unwrapped perfectly. And now it's time to use the slide knit. So once you click it, 
this is what you're going to get. This You're going to get this nice looking small window on the side. It only has one thing to check, which is the UV channel. You should leave it at one because our unwrap is uh, using the channel one. As you can see over here, map channel one and the UV scale. So this is what, what is going to happen. As soon as I click on unwrap selected, it's going to do what it's going to do, and it's going to give you this strip on the bottom. Now, if you click on it, you're going to notice that this strip down here, it's triangulated. And on top of it, it has a morpher uh, modifier added to it. So what this morpher does, it's basically doing this. Once I put it over to 100, it's going to morph into the shape that it's uh, base or the form is in and when it's once it's zero it's flat so this can be used as a bit of a helper and let's see how we can use this to our advantage so for this first part I'm actually gonna use a bit of a, a model I have over here it's a very very simple uh, swirling edge and this geometry what I want to do is I want to go ahead and put it on top of this strip over here but first of all this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna isolate it and I'm gonna make sure that all of these pieces are attached to each other so all of them they make one piece all right, and I, whoops, and isolate. And now I'm gonna move it into position. I'm gonna scale it down. Whoops, let me put it in the center. All right. Now taking into account that this blue line or this whole uh, plane is basically our UV island so we want to keep our geometry inside the UV island move it downwards just a tiny bit like this and just so we make it a bit more interesting I'm gonna click and drag two more copies space them up just a tiny bit so it's a bit more interesting and now I'm gonna select all three of those and again I'm going to reattach all of them and and isolate all right awesome so now before I do anything else I need to deal with one issue and that's the scaling issue as you saw I actually took this uh, model which was bigger and I made it smaller with the scale too. So if I right click, you're gonna see that my absolute uh, scale is at 9.19%, which can cause quite a bit of problems once we start conforming this. So in order to avoid those problems, this is like I said, very important, you need to reset the X form. So simply go over to utilities, reset X form, reset selected, right click, convert to edible poly. And now, the absolute local is at 100%. So if you've done everything right, now you have to come over here in the modifier list, you choose, you go down to skin and you go skin a wrap. Now, before we do the next step, which is to click on add and choose this or the surface, we want to save our file because sometimes this uh, script has been known to crash max, especially if you're working with uh, very heavy uh, details. So I'm going to go ahead and save my file. And all right, let's try and see what happens. So click on add and click on the base. It's going to work for a second. And actually it just did. So we have no more problems. All right, we're not going to touch any of the uh, options we here have here instead we're gonna click on the surface 
And now with the slider, we're simply going to conform it back to the original shape. And as you can see, now our shape is following that slider. And now we can right click, convert to an edible poly. And now we have this. We don't, we no longer need a morpher, delete. And we have this geometry that is sitting right next or right on top of uh, the shape that we actually started from. Now, if I remember right, we moved this for 60, uh, yep, we did. So get it back to zero. And, nah. I remember going to 60, so I'm simply going to go minus 60 on Y. <laughs> All right, then 60. Okay. Now we can delete this unwrap as we already use it up. All right, so we saw how we can uh, get the geometry on this side, even if I put a turbo smooth on. I'm going to get a bit more uh, details out of it. So let's continue on with the rest of the model. For the second part, or this middle part, we're going to do the same exact steps that we did previously. So a loop, hold down control, choose the polygons, grow the selection until we are at the point of what we're going to use. Again, detach, detach is cloned. Okay, and move the clone to the side for 60 centimeters. All right, awesome. So for this, I'm going to use a different uh, geometry. I'm basically going to use this, which, should, this, which is a bit of a variation of one of the images we saw here. So this one is basically what I have here, but I just added an extra shelf on the top and the bottom. So I can show you another important thing when you're using uh, this side knit. So first of all, let's go ahead and unwrap this again. So just select one of these guys, hit unfold strip from fold, from loop, open up the UV editor, All right, put it back into the side. Rotate it 90 degrees. Make sure it's flat on the top and on the side. All right, this looks pretty flat but still we have to check it make sure everything's fine all right check out the vw all right the vw in this case is okay so yes we can continue with the side knit all right awesome so slide knit unwrap selected and there is there it is that same strip that we had with the previous fold file all right, so select this geometry we have here. Put it where we want it. Scale it downwards. Just make sure it doesn't get off or get out of the plane. Because like we said, that is the UV space all right move it downward just a tiny bit like this it's okay on the bottom okay on the top awesome all right so what i'm going to do here is move it downwards just a tiny bit more and i'm going to squash it just a bit like this okay so important thing here to remember is that 
if you're going to be doing this, you make sure that you have uh, ample amount of geometry because this is deforming. Now, when I actually first when I tried doing this, I kind of screwed up because I forgot to add the extra edges in the middle, so my entire model was crashing, so it didn't deform well. So make sure you have all of these subdivisions in the middle. And once you have that done, then simply attach everything into one file, like this. So everything is part of the same model. Again, and isolate. And before we do the skin part, again, resave, because you never know when it can crash. All right. So let's go ahead and add the skin wrap modifier and choose the base it's gonna work for a second and all right let's see what just happened so I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna drag this to 100% there we go no problems no issues it conformed perfectly awesome great all right so select it right click convert to an editable poly delete this and now move it back on the y negative 60 or whatever uh, size you chose on yours and you have this conforming perfectly on your model now the only issue that you have here is this portion over here but in re all reality or in all honesty you can just quickly fix this by adding an extra edge there whoops there you go with the quick loop you can choose to remove this portion over here remove this one and now simply bridge these two guys so this is going to fix that issue with the gap so if you spend just a tiny bit time fixing up this this is really no problem all right so let me delete this and the only thing that's left is the top portion over here so let's see what we can use for this part over here so as you might uh, have guessed, we're gonna do the same exact thing to get this shape. So again, loop, hold on control, click on polygon, grow the selection until you want to, to get it to a position that you're okay with. Grow one more time, there we go. Detach, detach is cloned, okay. Move this to the side again 60 awesome and unwrap choose one of these guys hit unfold strip open UV editor and pack it in like this rotate 90 degrees pack it back in I can see right away the top is making that issue but like we said easy fix sides make sure you select the right ones let's try and see the bottom it shouldn't be any problems and there we go everything is done select the whole thing check the VW the VW is flat no issues awesome everything is looking fine so again click to slide uh, the slide knit with the selected unwrap selected we're gonna have that same strip on the bottom and here I'm gonna use something like this this is basically a model of a carving so for this I'm going to rotate this at around 90 degrees 
and I'm gonna make it smaller much smaller more or less about half of the size of this thing so make it so it's about so big okay now hold on shift and drag one more copy on this side I'm gonna rotate this at around for another 180 degrees and put them more or less something like this I'm actually doing it this way so I can have oops, well, first of all let's make sure that all of them are attached as one single poly or one single model there we go probably should have made all of these singles and then attach them together but it's okay all right and now I'm gonna go ahead and center this to the middle hold down shift and drag it to, uh, so about let's try with three copies and see how far it goes uh, it's a bit too much let's get it closer three copies and we can get it more the idea what I'm trying to do here is get all of these to fill in the maximum amount of UVW space without overlapping too much so let's figure three ah come on okay this works probably should be a bit more I'm trying one more time if it doesn't work you get the idea okay this works just perfectly so I'm gonna do here is select all of them and move them just a tiny bit over to this side okay now these guys are great what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select this portion over here and delete it and now I'm gonna make sure that all of these are part of the same model okay great Put it downwards a tiny bit and let's try to select all of these and this is where the perfectionist in me is trying to get it to the point where it's gonna be something like this awesome all right so we have this let's try and see if oh here we go the scale is out of tune so we have to reset the x form right click convert to an animal poly now the X form is at 100% again save before you put on the skin modifier so yeah let's go to skin wrap add and click on the base I'm gonna wait for a second and hopefully it will not crash it didn't crash okay awesome so again let's select the morpher put it to 100 percent and there it is i'm going to select this right click convert to an edible poly delete the morpher move this back negative 60 on the y and it's back here now the issue that we have here is that everything is looking fine over here it's really conforming quite well but we when we come over here we have a lack of one so we are missing one this is actually pretty easy to fix and all you got to do is select one of these guys make sure you don't select anything else and detach this one as a clone and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my base here I'm gonna affect the pivot and I'm gonna center it to the object now with just this or just the uh, model that we detached we want to align its pivot to the pivot of our 
center mesh. So click on align, click on the cylinder and go pivot point to pivot point. Click OK. Effect pivot only off. And now we just have to rotate this. And this is going to come back into position. There we go. So 90 degrees. And there it is. No more issues. And everything is looking fine. You can delete this. And more or less, we can call our totem finished. So if you take a look at the main model, you're going to notice that we went over, we made the bottom here with one type of carving, the middle part has a whole different type, and the top one has a different type again. So you can use this script and this type of modeling for pretty much anything that you need to have complex shapes on more complex uh, surfaces. So, uh, you can probably use this even for furniture, especially for those Victorian type uh, furniture. We have uh, a lot of details on legs that are turned and stuff like that. So all you gotta do is, like you saw here, unwrap your model, make sure it's flat, and then on the surface, add the details that you want, use a side knit or a slide knit script and Bob's your uncle. So I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I know it's not the most basic uh, video. It's a bit more advanced, but I really do help you guys manage to learn something new. So that would be it for this video. And again, I hope you guys had fun and I'll see you all in the next video.